Welcome to the second part of the enzymes um, lecture slides. What we're going to have a look at today is we're going to have a look at the factors affecting enzyme activity. So your learning intentions and success criteria here are um, the influences of catalyzing reactions from enzymes is dependent on things like temperature, pH, inhibitors, but then also how much or availability of either the reactant or the enzyme is present. So I'll let you read and copy them into your own notes, um, but essentially we're going to each of them in depth and you need to understand the key differences between them. One of the key things that I want to point out again is that I will use um, analogies or references that are um, things like how many ingredients you have, but when it comes to you answering a specific question, you need to be able to talk about things like concentration of reactants and concentration of enzymes. So you need to talk specifically when approaching answers to questions. And so enzymes are influenced or actually will work best when in their best conditions. And so one of the first conditions that we want to have a look at is temperature. Um, enzymes will help facilitate or break down um, substrates into multiple substrates or get multiple substrates into a singular one. And so when they do this, they're actually influenced by the environment that they're in. And so if you think about your body, your body sits at around that sort of 37 degree mark, pretty much that temperature is consistent for having the most amount of reactions, the optimal at any given point in time. So for our body temperature, enzymes that work within our body, the optimal temperature would be at about 37 degrees. And what that just means is that that means we're going to get the highest rate of reaction or the highest amount of reactions occurring at any one given time. And if we were to go downwards and have a cooler body temperature, what we would see is less reactions, whereas if we would go up in temperature on the other side of that line, we would see that you get this new term here called denatured. And so denaturing is a important term. Denaturing is the permanent change in the active site of the enzyme. And so the enzyme no longer looks the way that it looked before. And essentially because the active site binds to the substrate and helps to facilitate that reaction, it can't do that because the shape has been permanently changed. When we look at temperature, we see that the word denatured is only on the higher end of things, whereas when we actually lower the temperature on this side of the graph, all that does is that slows the enzyme down. And so if you think about if I have 30 people in a room and every time two people collide with each other when their eyes are shut and they're walking around randomly, we can call that a, a successful reaction. If the people are walking, say here, then there'll be a low amount of collisions. If I tell people to start running, then what we would see is we would see more collisions occurring and the likelihood of them, more of them being effective. So maybe we could, might say an effective collision is just two people hit face to face. And so when we lower the temperature out of sight of what the enzyme's desired conditions are, what we will find is we will find that the rate of reaction is lowered. However, once we go past the optimum, we see that the shape of the enzyme has been changed, the active site's shape has been changed, and then what that does is it no longer allows for the substrates to bind. Here is a key excerpt from what basically the crux of what I've just said um, that you can put within your notes. If we talk about pH, then that's when we talk about how acidic or how basic the environment is. And again, these are different depending on what the enzyme is. And so enzymes that exist inside of your stomach are suited to a low pH, whereas enzymes that exist in your mouth are suited to a much higher pH, so sort of that around that six mark. So what you can see here is that the highest rate of reaction will occur at the optimum pH for that specific enzyme. If we go down either side, what we will see is once those conditions are no longer favourable, on either side you'll see the active site gets permanently changed and the enzymes start to become denatured. And so the difference between temperature and pH is that in temperature, when the um, temperature is cooled down, the rate of reaction slows. However, when we talk about in pH, if we make something too acidic or too basic, then we get the enzymes permanently changing their active site shape meaning that they can no longer function at all. 
The third one that we're going to have a look at is the presence of these things called inhibitors. And so some molecules can take the certain shape of the desired substrate and then they can block it. So in this particular example, the normal reaction would have the substrate having that sort of diamond kind of shape that fits the enzyme. Whereas when we have an inhibitor, these are other substances that have a shape that is very similar. Um, they obviously don't look like diamonds when we look at them close up, but just for illustrative purposes, that's what they look like. So inhibitors will block the enzyme. They won't change how it functions. They just will prevent it from functioning to facilitate further reactions. So we call an inhibitor something like Panadol or Aspirin as it blocks an enzyme from being able to transmit signals to tell you to feel pain in your brain. So the enzyme that helps to break down messages and then continue the chain of messages is inhibited. And so therefore you are no longer get that signal towards your brain to say, I have a headache. So that's why they can and are effective at preventing headaches. So an inhibitor does not change the active site, it just blocks the active site and it can leave at any point in time. It's just while it is there, the enzyme can no longer bind to the substrate. Another type of inhibitor is one that does not block the active site directly, but it blocks a different part of the enzyme, which forces the shape to change. So enzymes are complex kind of proteins and they don't just have one part of their shape, they have multiple parts. The active site is obviously the key part that we speak about. However, other parts on the enzyme can be um, bound to other molecules and then that causes a deformation temporary deformation of shape and that's what happens there and then we can see that that diamond shape of the substrate can no longer bind to that again this is a temporary measure and it's not a permanent thing and so the presence of inhibitors will temporarily lower the rate of reaction or completely stop the rate of reaction but only for a period of time The last part of today's slides are about the concentration of the reactants and the concentration of the enzymes. And so essentially, if you think about, um, I'm going to go with a classroom environment. If I give one person the role of being an enzyme to help pair people up, they will be able to grab two people and bring them together. And if they are brought together, we can say that that is a successful collision or a successful reaction. All right then that person can go about going to get the next persons and then bringing them together and so on and so forth. And so effectively, what you are limited by when we talk about the concentration of reactants and the concentration of enzymes is, let's say I have 10 people in the room that are given the job of being an enzyme. If there's only 20 people in the room altogether, they can only work so fast, all right? So if I lower the amount of people in the room, there's still 10 enzymes, but if I take the total number of substrates or other people in the room that are going to be brought together down to 10, then five of my enzymes become useless because one enzyme's job is going to be to bind two people together. And so if we change or don't have enough reactants or substrates in the first instance, what we see is we can see that the overall capacity of how much reactions are occurring at any point in time is not high. Once we increase the amount of enzymes and increase the amount of reactants, we can see that it's getting more effective, but we hit a point here where we've got the optimal amount of enzymes and then we have the optimal amount of substrates to bind to it. If we increase the amount of substrates there, then we're not gonna have enough enzymes to be able to do a job. And so the rate of reaction will stay the same. And in the flip side, if we were to increase the amount of um, substrates because uh, the amount of enzymes, it won't make a difference because the amount of substrates remains the same. And so both this and the next slide, the concentration of the enzymes, what we'll see is we'll see if the enzyme and the substrate are not increasing at the same rate, we'll see that it will only go up to a certain point and we'll see that the rate of reaction will plateau or become flat. So unless we increase both the substrate and the enzyme at the same time, there'll always be one relying on the other, okay? So there'll always be 
one person having to pair up two more people and they can only do that so fast. But if we take the enzyme away, then there's not enough enzymes available to pair everyone up. So it can only happen so fast. Whereas in the flip side, if we've got too many enzymes trying to pair up people, but we don't have enough people to pair together, then we are also limited by how fast or how much of that job we can do at any point in time. And that's it.